Since this is an FRQ, uh, a few key things that you must do. You've got to make sure that you properly label curves. In this example, they've already done that for you. So they've told you this is F and this is G. If they hadn't, you'd have to do that yourself. So you have to say, okay, this is the F function. You then write down equals and tell the grader that you understand that this corresponds to this formula. I would go ahead and write it on your paper just so you don't forget that in some problems you'll have to do this. Any questions to there? Awesome. Next thing, uh, they imply by the picture that the two graphs intersect at zero and they also intersect at one. But I've seen students miss AP questions because they assume that that's true and it isn't always exactly what the picture implies. So it's a good idea to just double check and make sure that the intersections really are here and here. So we're going to all do that on your calculator right now. So go to your calculator. Uh, on the 84, please always put the F function in Y1 and the G function in Y2. That will prevent mistakes. So it was 2x parenthesis uh, 1 minus x, close parenthesis, and then y2 is 3 parenthesis x minus 1, close parenthesis, and then square root of x. They said the window is 0 to 1. Uh, zoom fits. I have trouble getting that to work. Wait, can you go back? Wait, for the window? For the window, yeah. just so like right here, Rachel. Say again. No. So on the window, just make your minimum x value 0 and maximum x value 1. And it doesn't matter what the y step is? No, because the zoom fit will adjust all of those oh, okay. automatically. need help. If you have an Inspire and you're struggling, just ask me. There's a quirk in the Inspire that causes some trouble. Well, Inspire's in the room. Oh, Tanner's got you on. Cool. Uh, one thing to note, please look at the board. Look at me. Look up, look up, look up. Okay, you notice how the red function appears to have a gap? Uh, it doesn't. It's just the calculator can't graph it perfectly. I've seen that happen more than once when the function involves a square root. So be a little, like, memorize that idea that when you graph a square root function, perhaps some other functions, that it can end up having some sort of visible gap when there really isn't one. So just be a little careful about that. Right. Questions? Awesome. Uh, so we got it drawn. We look at our problem and say, yeah, that's the right drawing, so the calculator is set up properly. And we just want to make sure that this intersection is what we think. So I'm just going to say second 
I hit the trace key, which gives me to calculate menu. Choose five for intersect. The calculator is asking some questions. It's saying first curve, and it wants to know is this the first curve I want? I say good as any, so yes. Press enter. It puts the cursor on the other curve. Is that the one I want? I say enter by, sorry, yes by pressing enter. It now wants a guess because the calculator can't tell whether you're supposed to be finding this intersection or this one. So I just move the cursor near the intersection of choice. Makes that gap look even worse. But this does come down at the top. We can go window negative 0.1 just to make it a little bit better. That looks pretty good. So if I do the calculation again, so I say second. Calculate, five for intersect, enter, enter. I know the intersection is near zero, so I can actually type zero. Press enter, and it confirms that the intersection is where I thought it was. So you're going to have to find intersections a lot. You would have a question about how to do that. You can find the other intersection, second, calculate. Five for intersect. Uh, I gotta make sure I'm on the right curve here. So I want that one, that's enter. Want that one, that's another enter. I know it's over near one, and it's where I thought it was. So. And you'll have to find the intersection a lot. Do you have any question on how to find the intersection? <laughs> Perfect. So back to the problem on the sheet. We're supposed to be finding the shaded area quick story that relates perfectly to this. So my, uh, something my daughter, like, I don't know, six, seven years ago, do a problem like this in calculus, and my son was like in fifth grade at the time, overheard us talking about finding area, and by coincidence, he had recently in his like grade school class studied the idea of how to find the area of more interesting shapes, and as little kids will do. He got really excited. He's like, hey, I know how to do that. He like wanted to jump into the conversation and help us find the area that my daughter was trying to figure out. And so we like, okay, Derek, so show us how you find area. And he says, it's really easy. You do this. You, uh, like he says, for example, like a little teacher, he <laughs> got out his graph paper and everything. And he's like, for example, what if I had to find the area of a, an interesting shape that maybe looked like so? And he started drawing this on his graph paper. He said, it's really not hard to find that area. You just um, kind of block it off in, into kind of known shapes. And then he noticed that on his graph paper that there were little lines in between, you know. So like, he said, then you just kind of draw the picture and then you just count up all the little squares and you find the area. He was really excited. He's like, see, it's not hard. He's talking to his older sister and I said, it's not hard, Jimmy. Just count the squares. You find the area. He's really excited. Um, we're like being real patient. We're like, that's, that's really cool there. So, so here's Jamie's problem. She understands this. 
but she's trying to find the area of something like this. Like, how do you do that? He took the challenge, he sat and stared at it for like about like 10 or 20 seconds. I tell he was just thinking and thinking and thinking, like, how do I apply this idea over here? And his answer was uh, very profound. This is what he said. <laughs> it's been a very popular answer over the years. Most students are like, can we please put that down on the test? Like, if you don't, then you walk out. And goes, um, anyway, uh, it's pretty profound. We do need to find a way to find the area. Um, it turns out to be pretty simple. It's actually very related to what he did. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to draw a rectangle. So let's go back to our calculator so we get a bigger picture. Uh, I'm going to drag this over to the board so I can see it better. Hold on a second. So get this up here, pull this over. Drop that. <laughs> Got that one. <laughs> so here we go. It's nice. That looks like a fish too. It's a good yeah. chubby fish. Um, <laughs> we could back silly at Dory actually. Um, so we draw a, we need to find this area. Here's how we're going to do it. So we're going to draw a rectangle right here. So I would. On your paper, kind of draw, oh, your best to kind of draw what I'm doing here. So we draw a rectangle. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot. We can cheat. Turn to the last sheet here. It helped you out. Mm -hmm. No drawing necessary. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Glad I could help. <laughs> so turn to that last sheet, and I've already drawn a bunch of rectangles for you. Okay. And uh, what we do, so I'll go there as well. Um, sorry about that. So we'll look at this first rectangle here that's red on the board. It's the very first one that I've drawn. And we're going to talk about how to find the area of that rectangle. Uh, once we've figured that out, we'll just kind of go to the next and the next. So let's see. Rectangular area is easy. It's the length multiplied by the width. Uh, the width is pretty easy in this case. Somebody just study the picture and raise your hand as soon as you can tell me what the width is. Just look for a hand. Uh, just a little bit closer. No worries. There you go. We knew that this was zero and this was one. So I've just kind of broken it into ten slices. So McCall said this dimension is 0.1. So we need to take 0.1 multiplied by this dimension. So let's label that a little bit. Make these maybe a little bit smaller. That's pretty good. So here we're working in red. So we're trying to find this area here. So the area this rectangle is going to equal the length uh, multiplied by 0 0.1. Question? Awesome. So we have to find a way of finding the length. Well, it turns out it's really simple. We'll play a little whole class, give away lots of tickets here. I have some sort of graph. I have a y value here that's, I don't know, 8, and a y value here that's equal to 2. Uh, don't think too hard, but I'll pay you if you can tell me how long that line is. This is not a trick. I really will pay you if you raise your hand. If you're ready, you should be paid. Um, how long is line L on the board there, Jackson? Six. Jackson says 6. Note that that's simply 8 subtract 2. The subtraction's important. How many got that it was six? One, two for Jackson. Do it again. Well, let's say this is y equal seven. Let's jump down to here. Like, I don't know, y equal nine? Negative. 
So once again, raise your hand and tell me how long that line is. How long is line L? It starts up here at a y coordinate of 7, ends at a y coordinate of negative 9. How long is line L? So Nathan? Uh, 16. Nathan says 16. Nathan, what computation did you do to come up with 16? 7 minus negative 9. So he said the top y coordinate, subtract the bottom y coordinate. Uh, it helps if you write the right numbers. Um, so this is definitely 16. Uh, we got that one? Point two for neighbor. Um, one more is a quick example. Like what if we have this one? How long that line is, please, Kirk? How long is that one? Half the class is too bored now that my tickets are not even worth it anymore. I can't raise my hand for a lousy ticket anymore. Um, Danielle. Five. Danielle says five. How did you compute it, Danielle? Negative one minus negative, negative, one minus negative six. Uh, you've got to please point to for Danielle. Uh, is just give me one or two fingers. One means that makes perfect sense, two means it doesn't, quickly. Two points. Okay, now everyone look at me. I want to see your eyes up here. Look at me. It's a really easy idea that to find the length of any vertical line on a graph, you simply take the y coordinate at the top, and you subtract the y coordinate at the bottom. That's all we've done in all three cases. Are you with me? Okay, it's a really simple idea, but I've found in previous years that for some reason, when I do this little game, everyone can get it right. But as soon as this idea needs to be applied to a different problem, the idea that it's the y at the top subtract the y at the bottom somehow doesn't show up. So it's super important that you remember y at the top subtract y at the bottom. Question? Awesome. So back to this picture, I want to find the length of the rectangle so I can compute the area. Uh, so we just say it back to me. How do I find the length of this line right there? Y at the top minus y at the bottom. More for Jackson. So I take the white corner at the top, subtract the white corner at the bottom. Multiply by 0.1. I need a way to find that y coordinate at the top. And that's the one I want is right here. So how do I find the y coordinate at that point? Please. Uh, you could plug in the number into your calculator. Perfect. So this equation up here, Jimmy, is what? Um, 2x, 1 minus x. So we call that f of x. So that's 2x multiplied by 1 minus x. Two tickets for Jimmy. We need to use that formula to find this y coordinate. Uh, so somebody, he's already told us what to do. I just want somebody to tell me symbolically, how can I write, like what's the x coordinate, what's the y coordinate of that spot right there? If you don't know the numbers, I don't care. I just want to know the symbols that you would use to represent <coughs> the x coordinate and the y coordinate of that point right there. So, um,
6.1 because that's the x coordinate. The y coordinate will turn out to be negative, but we let the computation handle that for us. So this is g of x is equal to 3, x subtract 1, square root of x. So over here we write 0.1 and g of 0.1. find the decimal value in your calculator. Like, what is this decimal? All we know, okay, everybody. What's this decimal? All we know. So, Mackenzie? Say about it. Negative point. Is that three decimals? Eight by three, thank you. Who can confirm that the value is negative point eight by three? somebody let's go to here uh, 0.18 uh, three decimals uh, so point one eight zero yeah can you want to confirm that points three for Danielle so So basically, the area of that first red rectangle, therefore, the y coordinate at the top is f of 0.1, y coordinate at the bottom is g of 0.1. These two subtract to get the length of the rectangle, multiply by the width of the rectangle, which is simply 0.1 that will give us the area of that first rectangle. So that would be like 0 0.180. Subtract negative 0.853. Multiply by 0.1. It's critical that you understand this process, otherwise some future problems won't make any sense to you. So we have any question about where these numbers are coming from? Why we did what we did. The reason I say that is the calculator punching part of the homework is really easy. It's knowing how to set up the calculator that really matters. Question. Awesome. We found the area of the red rectangle. We would do the same thing for, say, the next rectangle. So let's just do it quick, make sure you've got the pattern down. So I want to find the area of this green rectangle. Somebody tell me what to write. Yeah, but point two. 
area of any rectangle at any x coordinate, if we take that, multiply by the width of the rectangle, that will give us the area of any rectangle. All you have to do is choose the x coordinate you are interested in. Give me one or two if this makes perfect sense. If it doesn't, please show me two fingers. Does this make perfect sense to you? This will find the area of any rectangle.
we want to do this computation for many different values of x. So somebody tell me what's the first x value that we would want to plug into this formula in order to perform this computation over and over and over again for the shape that is shown above. What's the x you want to start with? Like Tyler said we just use this formula to plug in any x we want. What x do you want to begin with for this particular problem? For hand. So Ryan, what did you point one? Uh, three tickets for Ryan. He said we choose an x value of 0.1. Now here's where I'm going to steer you a little bit different than what we've been talking about, but you should be able to follow. That would put me right here. I'd be finding this y coordinate. Uh, Ryan, what's the only flaw in perhaps starting at x equal 0.1? Right. Uh, we've done it by hand here for sure. Uh, good answer. Um, that's not really what I'm too concerned about because what I want to do is I want to use this formula here, back right here, I want to use it over and over again to find the total area that's shown here. And if I start doing that computation, there's actually a bigger problem. Who sees the bigger problem? Let's go okay with Casey, sorry. Yeah, you're missing the chunk of negative. Yeah, I don't get anything here. So do you have an alternate suggestion, Casey, for what x value you make would be better to start with? Starting at like zero or something. Uh, very well said. In fact, we can start at zero, it doesn't hurt a thing. Turns out that the y coordinate right here is zero for both functions, so you'll end up with just nothing happening. But it is the appropriate place to start because that's where the shape begins. So what I'm going to write down here is the total area is going to begin my computations at x equals zero. Write that down. Uh, three for Casey. Where do I want to stop doing? Where do I want to stop doing this computation? Like, and then I want to do it for many, many x's. Russell, I want to go all the way to one, so I cover the entire shape. So I come down here and say, start at x equals zero, stop at x equal one. We're going to do an integral. And what we're integrating is that formula we had just a second ago. So let's, let's slide this over just a little bit. So I take this formula, f of x, subtract g of x, close parenthesis. Uh, what do I need to multiply? So this, okay, first, somebody tell me. When you take some x value, you plug it in here, and here you do the subtraction. This little part right here, just this part, what is this finding? Someone hand please. What is it finding? The length. The length. Uh, to find the area of a given rectangle column, what must we multiply the length by? Width. Width. Perfect. Uh, three for column. Somebody, what width do you want to use? So point one is what we chose up here. It's a good choice, Caleb. Three tickets. There is a, and I, I use that because it's easy to kind of talk about. Someone help. What's the flaw in choosing point one? Why is point one? I mean, it was a good choice for this example because I can easily talk about it. It's easy to see. What's the flaw? What's the reason why we don't want to choose point one, Nathan? Um, it's not as precise as the calculator can calculate. So well done. If we can go further, um, if we make it more precise, so three decimal points, so that we would be able to be more precise in our output. Uh, well done. The rectangles would be much narrower. We make very thin rectangles, they will fit more precisely within the shape. Does that make sense? So we just use whatever the calculator has as its default. So we're just going to put dx. dx means change in x, but it represents the width of each rectangle. So as Colin said, this is the length of the rectangle, this is the width of the rectangle. So you multiply them together, you get the area of a single rectangle. When you integrate, it's going to occur over and over again, and then they'll all get added together. Remember, the integral sign means a big S for a sum. We're going to add them up. Questions? Perfect. Uh, we just need to do this on our calculator, so go here. So on an 84, what's the area of a rectangle that's equal to 0.1? 
want to start at x equals 0, want to stop at x equals 1. <coughs> remember, in the calculator, we put the f function in y1. So we say alpha, calculate, number 1, subtract. And then we say alpha, calculate y2, and then dx. So we need to show that again. Uh, I need to show you, I need to show you in a second. We need the 84 again. Okay. So in 84, it's math 9. We'll give you the symbol for integrating. Uh, we put a 0 to 1. And then the functions are under the alpha. And the, it's the trace button. It's called F4. So I, I know that Y1 corresponds to the F function. Use that, subtract, and y2 alpha corresponds to the g function. Good. Anybody else? You should get that value. If you don't get that value, make sure you're out. Good. Okay, on 83, here's what you do instead. Okay, first of all, I have to change my mode so it looks like an 83. You don't do this. So ignore that step for a second. And in 83, you're going, to, you're going to hit math 9 still. We'll say function integrate. Okay, with me? Okay, we want to, what are the two things we want to multiply when we do the integral? We want to multiply f of x subtract g of x, you type that first. f is in y1, so you the bars key for variable. <coughs> you go over to y variables. Press enter. There's the list. Choose y1. Subtract. y2, so you do bars again. Stop the comment, just stop there for a second. Just wave at me if you need help getting me here. So the two things that multiply are this times the dx value. So in the 83, you just type an x to indicate the dx. With a comma. Mm -hmm. At what x value do we start at? Zero. Type that. Comma. And at what x value do we stop? One. Close parentheses. Questions from anyone? Uh, we've now finished. Okay, back to the worksheet though. So on the actual problem number eight. This complicated is much higher than just this. Yeah. So write this, you get full credit. You get one point for simply writing this. The second point is for coming up with the correct decimal to three places. So questions. Awesome. Next one, go to number one, please.
Okay, number one is very similar. It gives two functions. It then says, what is the area of uh, the region R? So step number one is because it's a calculator lab problem is you've got to get a good picture of what you see in front of you on the calculator. So go back to your calculator. And, oh, we need to do some labeling because notice, they don't give names to these functions. So you need to call one of them F and one of them G. It doesn't really matter, but you have to tell the grader. So I'm going to tell the grader this is F of X. I'm going to tell the grader this is G of X. So you can see that I'm indicating that. And I put F into Y1, G into Y2 as always. Back to the calculator. Oops, wrong one. Tangent of X. And then two subtract X cube. Choose a window. <clears throat> I look at the picture, and my x min seems fairly apparent, but it is not clear what the x max should be. So, my advice it looks like I only need to start at x equals zero, uh, but I need to make sure this really is zero. So, I'm going to start a little bit to the left, maybe negative one, and then how far right I go is based on experience, and I've learned that five is a pretty good choice for the AD test. Zoom fit. case it doesn't seem to be quite as good a choice as I was hoping for because if I compare my graph to the let's make this smaller <coughs> drag this over here so I'm not really seeing the same thing this is the x-axis, this is the x-axis. Here's the y-axis, here's the y-axis. I'm supposed to have a big, plus I don't really, this stuff over here seems like too much. I think I'm way too big, so I'm going to shrink my window. So this is 0 to 5. So maybe I go all the way back down into here somewhere, about 1, maybe 1 1.5. So go back to the calculator. Window. about 1.3 or something would be a little better. So one more try. Window 1.3. Zoom there.
supposed to be finding Let's this over again. Mr. Smith? Yes, please. I need help. No worries. Um, in calculus, whenever they use a trig function, uh, like tangent of x or sine of x or whatever, uh, trig functions only accept angles as their arguments. So whenever you're plugging for x, it's assumed to be the angle of something. Um, angles can be measured in degrees or radians. You learned that in a previous class. But in calculus, the assumption is every angle we use is in radians. So you have to have the calculator in radian mode. So on the 84 color, it tells you at the top that it's radian mode. On the regular 84, just hit the mode button. It's right there. And just make sure that you choose radians instead of degrees. And then just read graphics here, it'll work. Anybody else? So. That was very unsatisfying. <laughs> this shaded area. I do it one rectangle at a time. So I put a rectangle here, another rectangle here. These lines are representing rectangles. There are many rectangles in between them. I just can't draw all of them. You kind of lose track that I've got multiple ones. So like another one there, and there's another one here, there's another one here. All these different rectangles. I find the area of each little rectangle, I add them all together. But I've got to come up with the formula again for finding the area of each individual rectangle. So do exactly the same process as before. I say, okay, um, let's come over and do it here. So the area of a rectangle is y coordinate at the top, subtract y at the bottom times the width of the rectangle, which we'll call the x. All that's left to do is figure out what's the formula for finding the y coordinate at the top of each rectangle, what's the formula for finding the y coordinate at the bottom of each rectangle. Help somebody. Please. Um, we can do all of our like work on the uh, that is a really good question. Five tickets. Take six. Uh, the reason I like the question so much, Sarah, is this, because I asked you many times to not do your work on the worksheet. It's perfect. In this case, because there are pictures in the worksheet, it actually works better to go ahead and use it. So, um, so I get my board to sort of where I'm at. 
board is lost. So, yeah, you're free to just use the space on the paper. Okay. Thank you for asking. Um, so back to here. Where do I find the white coordinate that is at the top of each of these little rectangles that I'm drawing? Nick is in for three. Who else is in? And the white part at the top of each little rectangle that I do. This is in for three. Who else is in? Uh, Tara's in. Who else is in? Smooth's in for three. Jimmy's in for three. Colin's in for three. Tara, what do I do? Um, in this case, you gotta be careful here a little bit. So you're right, I need to find the formula that defines this thing. I kind of forgot, so I'm going to go back and look. Okay, perfect. So that's f of x. So I write down f at any x. Subtract. Uh, what's the y coordinate at the bottom of each rectangle, Sarah? Um, it would be g of x. Wait, no one, no one, no one, no one. Perfect. So this problem looked different than the previous, right? The y coordinate all along here is just always zero. So I would put subtract zero, multiply by dx, that will give me the area of any rectangle at whatever x coordinate I choose. Um, Tara, at what x coordinate would I want to start using this formula? What x coordinate? Um, at zero? It appears to be zero. Okay, really, I'm a strong recommendation. Double check. Okay. Um, so go to your calculator. I, I've just seen people lose points for the dumbest thing, like they just forget to double check. So on your calculator, you need to find out what the spot is. Um, it says zero. It's where the graph crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to hit second, uh, calculate, and choose number two, which is find the zero. So press two. I gotta make sure we're on the right <clears throat> we're on the right function. Because sometimes you'll end up on the red and you want to be on the blue. It says left bound. That means please place the cursor to the left of the zero. Like so. And now the cursor is on the left side of the zero. You press enter to identify that as the left bound. Move the cursor to the right of the zero. Press enter again. He wants a guess. So you put the cursor near the location of the zero. You press enter. Sure enough, zero. <coughs> so then you're going to have to find zeros over and over again. Does anyone need help? I don't mind showing it as many times as you need. So, thank you. so why wouldn't we do the, the simpler option and go um, press uh, alpha trigger? Second trace and then the value of the point. Oh, that's not a bad way in this case because you suspect that the zero is actually at zero and then it would confirm that it is. No, that's totally valid. Um, there's some place over here you can't do that because you don't know the exact x value. Um, but no, good answer. Three tickets. Anybody else? Okay, so back to this question, Tara. We're here now. We know we need to start at x equals zero. We plug that zero into here, it's going to find the length of a rectangle times the x over and over again. Mm -hmm. Tara, where do I stop using this formula to find the area of rectangles inside this shape? Call it no. Call it says never mind. Where do I stop? Uh, so kind of point on your paper where you want me to stop. It's a little hard to say in words, like point where you want me to stop. Um, kind of. Uh, so Casey's kind of thinking stop here. The idea I'm trying to get you to see is this. This formula works for this rectangle, this one, this one, this one, this one, all of these. 
it works for this one, it works for this one, it works for, say, this one. And approximately what x coordinate does it stop working? I'll have to know, please. When is this formula no longer valid for finding the area of these little rectangles? I'll have to know, when is it no longer valid? Say. When it crosses the zero. Point to where you're looking. Over there. Stay with me for a second, say. So if I get over here, say, if I'm trying to find the area of this really thin rectangle right there, I would take y coordinate at the top, subtract y at the bottom. Uh, how would you calculate the y coordinate at the top? Perfect. So will this formula calculate properly the rectangle that's located here? No, it won't. So we can't use this formula all the way across. Where do we have, at what x do we have to stop using this formula approximately? So he notes that this is x equal about 0.902. That's where we stop. We can't use this formula any longer once we get to that spot because the top of the rectangles is different now. The top of each rectangle is now following a totally different function. Okay, if it doesn't make sense, please show me two. But give me one or two of what Colin just explained make perfect sense to you. points for the room. So what we have to do is this is going to work just fine to, to find all of these little rectangular areas because every one of those rectangles has the same pattern. The top of the rectangle is simply a y coordinate on the f function. This is f of x. And the bottom of every rectangle is a y coordinate of 0 taking the function's value minus zero is going to find perfectly the length of any of these rectangles all the way to here. The trouble is that after that, we're no longer following the f function as far as the top of the rectangle. We're now following the g function. So we're going to use this formula for these values of x. But then we need to use a different formula the rest of the way. So we've got to say the top of this formula is the g at some x minus 0 times dx. That's going to begin at x equal about 0.902. And we've got to go all the way to someone help. What x value do we stop? using this formula to find the area of little thin rectangles inside of here. When do we stop? Jimmy, when do you make it? Yeah. Perfect. So you need to find this spot right here. Whatever that, anyone happen to find that value already, right? It's four point six. Okay. And out of habit, I'm always going to do three decimals because that's required on the test. So. We've got two computations. This one for these different x values, and the green one for the other x values. You're finding the area as a whole in two separate pieces. Question. Okay, that was kind of the trying to make sure you understood the idea. Let's go back to the sheet and show what I would write on my paper. So what I'd write on my paper is this. Get rid of this one now. Come on. Okay, go on full print on the AP test, here's what you must do. You must tell the grader that this is f of x, this is g of x. So here's f, here's g. You've got to find this intersection right here. So on your paper, make a note. 
label it. Okay, you have to label it. If you don't label it, you'll lose point. Okay, next thing, it's a rule of the AP test. It's a requirement that any intermediate computations, you cannot use rounded values. You have to use the complete value that is in the calculator. Therefore, you must properly store the values in your calculator. So I'll show you how to do that. So everyone, go back to the calculator screen. Um, we need to find this intersection. So second, calculate. Let's use five for intersect. Yeah, I want that curve. I also want that curve. And I want to get over to here for my guess. So I can drive over there a little bit. Press enter. Okay, if your screen does not say intersection, you're doing it wrong. So get to where your screen says intersection and just wait. If it doesn't say intersection, wave at me so I can help you. It's got to say intersection. If it doesn't say intersection, you will lose points. Questions? Still punch the buttons. Wait a second. Once it says intersection, uh, the calculator is now stored in x, this number, and in y, this number. We need to store them somewhere else because the calculator will continue to overwrite these. So you go second quip. We want the x coordinate, so press x, press enter. There's the value. You want to store it somewhere else. So the store key is down here above the on key. Press store. And I'm going to use B, alpha B. A is used for area, so I'll use B instead. So alpha B. Hit enter. If you're curious, just do alpha B and I'll show you that it's in B. Questions? Wait with me if you need me to do it again. Okay. So did you get to the place where it said intersection? Yeah. Let me get back there real quick. The second cal. Five. Make sure I've got the right curves here. There we go. Enter, enter, enter. So you're here, right? Perfect. Just go second, quit. <coughs> Type in X just to make sure you're storing what you think you're storing. Kind of mentally check and say, yeah, that's the number. I remember it was something like that. And you hit store, which is right above on. You say alpha, wherever you want to put it. Anybody else? Uh, we need another point, though. So back to the graph. We also need this point. So that one's a zero, so you find it by using the calculator again. Second, trace, zero. I gotta make sure I'm on the right curve here. I'm on the wrong curve. If you're on the wrong curve, the up and down arrow will move you from curve to curve. There we go. It says left bound. So I move along the curve somewhere to the left of the zero. That's fine. Enter. Right bound. You must move to the right of the zero. That's good. I have the zero surrounded in the middle. Make sure it says the word zero. Okay, we're looking at the board for a second. Look up. The calculators are not perfect. Once in a while, I have seen a calculator calculate zero. It will say zero, but this won't be zero. It'd be like some strange number to the minus 14th power, which means it's done its best. Okay, but that it just can't seem to get any closer than. Point zero 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 one five six nine two eight seven. Trust that that's as good as it's going to get as long as it says zero. If it says zero here, you've done as good as it's going to get. You'll be fine on the tab. For questions, but you have to store this number as well. Don't just write it down. You have to store it. So you go second quit. Uh, press X again. Make sure we've got the right number. 
Okay, that's what I want. That's the number. So I say store alpha C. Just make sure I've got it. Wave if you need help with that. So back here on the homework sheet then, all I have to do is write it out. I'm going to label that one. So make sure you write it down for the grader. This point right here has an x coordinate. Whoa. Thank you. Label this point. This point has an x coordinate that is equal to 1.26, 0, always three decimals. And we have stored it in C. To get full credit, I must write down an integral. So I tell the grader I'm finding the area. So I first integrate from x equals 0. Now you don't have to write the number, you just write the letter. Oh, I forgot to tell the grader up here, this is b. So go x equal b here. And what I want to integrate is f of x subtract 0 multiplied by dx plus I do a second integral from b C, this integral is g of x, <coughs> subtract 0, multiplied by dx. Yeah. That's what I need to do. Questions? Please. Why do you have to do the letter when you just have the On the paper, you can write the numbers, but the rules of the AP test are because this number isn't exactly 0.902, it's really so much longer value. The test rules are if you don't use the longer value, they'll dock you. It's just the rules of the test. They're trying to teach you how to use your calculator to get more accurate results. Um, what happens is if you don't store it, I can't say it's a 100% chance, but there's a decent chance that your final answer won't be correct in three decimals. It works sometimes, it just doesn't work every time. So the habit to develop is just always store it. Does that make sense, Scott? Good question. Three tickets. Anybody else? So now it's a matter of just punching the calculator enough times to get the right result. So second clip. Clear that off. Math 9. I go from 0 to B. Just type in B, alpha B. Uh, going back and forth with that. So just type, come on. There we go, alpha B. Come over here, I need to use f of x, which is in my y1. You don't have to type subtract 0 if you don't want to. dx. And then add to that another integral, math 9, from b to c. Uh, this is g of x. Subtract 0 dx. Press enter. Question. Please. So on the 83, let me change modes here. So that's uh, variables, y variables, function, y1, uh, minus 0, comma, dx, comma, 0 to b, close parenthesis, and then plus, so you get to that. Math 9 
again. And I'm going to do something different here, because I don't like when it starts to, um, well, it's confusing to me when it's, the string gets too long. So I'm just going to find that one. That's the first part of the area. I'm going to say add that to the map line again. Uh, so variables, y variables, function, one, two, one, zero, one, zero. This one has to go from B to C. Uh, this needs to be back, sorry. The homework is to simply finish the problems in the pink sheet, so. so do the remaining problems in the pink sheet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to miss 